Computer science has been acquired by Johnson & Johnson. Are dry eyes happy or are they crying? News of Johnson & Johnson's acquisition of Tier Science has left us wondering what's to become of this dry eye company that led the way into our understanding of meibomian gland dysfunction. With their first release of LippyView and LippyFlow into the eye care space in 2012, Tier Science launched a new way and to look at this paradigm of dry eye with new diagnostics and new treatments. This was followed by the release in 2014 of the LippyView 2, which did both the uh, lipid layer analysis as well as meibomian gland imaging. And then in 2016 with the Lippy scan, which was a new way of doing mybography. Financial terms are not disclosed, but the deal is expected to close by the end of 2017. And what's surprising to most of us about this deal is that it isn't with a company like Allergan. With their share of the dry eye market with Restasis and the rollout of TrueTier, most of us would think that this would have been a natural fit. However, in 2016, J&J acquired Abbott Medical Optics in a $4.3 billion deal, and AMO deals with products in three main areas, cataract surgery, laser refractive surgery, and then consumer eye health. And although Tier Science has had a substantial price decrease over the last couple of years, perhaps this J&J partnership with AMO and Tier Science will help further enhance their manufacturing. Now, a lot of people are asking me, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And honestly, it's just a thing. Like my video on the merger of Luxottica and Essilor, I tend to look at the positive side of these types of business transactions, especially for patients. You can be sure that J&J &J will have plans to grow the business, which will mean more treatments for more patients. And as a dry eye specialty practice who does a lot of lippy flow, I've seen a dramatic effect of lippy flow on patients' lives. According to LEMP, nearly 86% of all dry eye patients have some aspect of MGD. And we did a study in our office and we found that 78% of our dry eye patients have MGD. So whether it's 80% or 90%, a lot of people have meibomian gland dysfunction. And most practitioners are using a heat source, like a warm compress, to attempt to help their MGD patients. And although it brings about symptomatic relief, studies as well as our clinical experience have shown that it does little to fix the dysfunction of meibomian gland dysfunction. Instead, our experience, as well as the clinical studies, have demonstrated the effect of lippy flow to bring about an improvement in the function of the meibomian glands. The way that we know MGD is becoming more functional is through the use of a calibrated meibomian gland expression, which I highlight in this video right here. To be honest, I have some concerns about the merger, but most of those concerns are kind of selfish. I've worked with Tier Science, their sales team, their research people, and their marketing group for about four years now. They're amazing people, and as with any acquisition, we get concerned for the people. Who's J&J &J going to have involved to help bring about this message of dry eye? Are they going to understand the intricate inner workings of MGD and its balance for both the patients and the eye care providers? Frankly, tier science is something great, and I'm very hopeful that this marriage with J&J &J will make it even greater.